Hey guys! In today's video, I'll be reviewing the top 8 best 3D printer. I made this list based on my personal opinion, and I tried to rank them based on their quality, durability, customer reviews, and more. If you want to know about the best pricing and more information, you can check the description links below. Number 8 in my list is Elegoo Resin 3D Printer. The Mars 3 is the sixth version of Elegoo's popular Mars 3D printer. Besides being the best-looking Mars yet, the printer also comes with some performance perks, including a surprisingly accommodating 143 by 90 by 165 mm build volume. Big for a standard-sized resin 3D printer. Plus a 4K LCD that allows it to print at an ultra-fine resolution of 35 microns per voxel in the X by Y axis. While it is not the first printer to bring 35 micron resolution such a form factor, shout out to the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. It does so with a considerably larger build volume. It takes the good bits of its predecessors, adds in better LCD tech and a spiffy new look, and comes out a well-rounded machine. It still feels like the go-to workhorse we liked past Mars printers for being. It just works. No fuss about it. With a price tag of $209, it's specs, looks, and bundled one-year subscription to Chitu Box Pro, worth $169 by itself. Make the Mars 3 one of, if not the best standard-sized resin 3D printer currently available. Number 7 in my list is Frozen Sonic Mini 8K 3D Printer. The Frozen Sonic Mini 8K has one defining feature, astonishing resolution. Cramming 7500 by 3240 pixels into a build area of 165 by 72 mm gets each pixel's X by Y size down to just 22 microns. This means a less noticeable staircase effect around the X and Y axis of a print. In short, the potential for crisper detail. If you're in the market for the ultimate possible resolution for your prints, be it professionally or simply for the superiority of mind, knowing your prints are the best they can be, the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K is your best bet. The Mini 8K lacks the smart device comfort of the Creality Halot 1 Pro, but the general usability and hardware are good enough that you're not sacrificing anything in the core printing experience. It is, by all measures, a well-balanced resin 3D printer. A clever resin vat design uses corner pegs to align the vat when inserting it in the machine and raise the vat when placing it on a desk, which makes the Sonic Mini 8K one of the more pleasant machines to use when handling a vat full of resin. The print plate leveling is a little tired, using four machine screws to fix it in place, although we do like the decorative flourish on the print plate surface texture, which is said to improve print adhesion. Number 6 in my list is Creality Resin 3D Printer. Where cheaper resin 3D printers do the basics well and not a lot else, the Creality Halot 1 Pro does the basics and throws an unorthodox build volume, Wi-Fi connectivity with useful features, and a slick user interface into the mix. At $349, the Halot 1 Pro does a lot to justify its small bump in price over our cheaper picks above. And even then, it doesn't cost that much more. The Hallett 1 Pro's near-square 130 by 122 mm print plate offers a large area to print in, great for accommodating batches of parts and sprawling, awkward print orientations. In terms of printable Z-axis height, the Hallett 1 Pro offers 160 mm. The print resolution is on par with the Mars 2 for this, but it is by a long stretch a more modern experience. You get a Wi-Fi connection and cloud operability that actually makes sense, with computerless slicing, app operability, and webcam monitoring if you have a USB cam handy, plus onboard model storage. The print fat and print plate are fiddly and lag behind the likes of Elegoo's Mars series, and Creality's implementation of its cloud model library has also left a sour taste in some mouths, thanks to the seeming accommodation of ruthless content ripping. For its short list of shortcomings, it's an innovative, different choice. Number 5 in my list is Anycubic Cobra 3D Printer. The Anycubic Cobra is a surprisingly capable 3D printer, offering some top drawer features for very little money. 
the auto bed leveling, direct extruder, PEI coated removable bed, and sensorless homing are commonly seen on machines costing much more than the Cobra's $259. It's fantastic to see them on a printer that costs barely more than the prolific Creality Ender 3 V2. You can see where Anycubic has shaved the price down though, with the Cobra being incredibly plasticky, and some assemblies skimping on parts you expect could easily improve the experience. Putting this aside though, the Cobra is a cheap, capable printer that's easy to take apart and tinker with. It's Anycubic at its best, with smart, inexpensive machines. Number 4 in my list is Voxlab Aquila X2 3D Printer. It would seem that Voxlab has discontinued the Aquila, our previous under $200 pick. Handily, its successor, the Voxlab Aquila X2, is almost the same machine, except with a couple of perks for not much more money. Where the Aquila was cheaper than a Creality Ender 3 but better, the Aquila X2 is the same price as an Ender 3 but much better. You get belt tensioners, a textured glass print bed, a filament sensor, a large and vibrant color UI, not to mention a 32-bit mainboard and silent stepper motor drivers, although this silence is quickly drowned out by the obnoxiously loud cooling fans. While auto bed leveling doesn't come as standard, which is a shame, there is a port on the mainboard for you to equip the Aquila X2 with a bed leveling probe. A tilled $35 add-on that, despite pushing the overall price up closer to $200, helps the X2 outpunch similarly priced competition. Tinkerers expecting to customize the Aquila X2's firmware should note there are several variants of the Aquila X2 differentiated by their mainboard. This is a result of Voxlab chopping and changing suppliers during the chip shortage. One variant, known as the H32, is trickier to update with custom firmware. It's not impossible. Voxlab details some steps on its GitHub repo, but certainly more involved, requiring the Eclipse IDE to implement. Unfortunately, you can only know which board you have by opening the machine up. Number 3 in my list is official Creality Ender 3 S1 3D printer. I'd avoided Ender 3 printers for a long while, because they came in kit form and required many hours of assembly, setup and fine-tuning to use. For just a little more than the kit versions, the newer Ender 3 S1 comes nearly fully pre-assembled, and with high-end features like a direct drive extruder and self-leveling bed. Print quality even out of the box was excellent, although a lot of that comes down to having good models to work from. I'd love it to have a touchscreen and Wi-Fi, but apart from those missing features, this is a great way to get polished results from a $400 3D printer. Number 2 in my list is Monopris Mini Delta 2 3D Printer. Among the things we look for in an entry-level 3D printer are a low price, ease of setup and use, largely problem-free operation, and solid print quality. The Monopris Mini Delta V2 3D printer ticks off all these boxes. It lists at just under $200, and it is a cinch to set up and operate. Its print bed leveling is truly automatic and requires no calibration. Bed leveling problems can be the bane of some budget and even prissier 3D printers. For software, it comes with a modified version of the popular open-sourced Cura program we have seen with numerous other 3D printers. The Mini Delta V2 eschews the Cartesian X and Y Z axis. Design found in most filament-based 3D printers in favor of the Delta design, in which the extruder's motion is controlled by three sets of arms. This makes it fast and capable of printing tall, relative to its other dimensions, objects, though it still has a relatively small build area. The Mini Delta V2 is great for newbies thanks to its bargain basement price, easy setup, and smooth operation. Although its output in our tests was nearly misprint free, print quality was unspectacular. That, and a relatively small build area, makes it a less than optimal choice for intermediate, let alone expert, users. But it's a fine low-risk first 3D printer for those getting their feet wet in 3D printing. Number one in my list is Original Prusa i3MK3S plus 3D printer. As the flagship of Prusa Research's 3D printer line, the original Prusa i3 MK3 Plus is the latest iteration of a machine that has undergone a decade of advances and tweaks.
The result is a polished open-frame 3D printer devoid of obvious flaws, supported by an extensive network of community and help features. While user manuals for many 3D printers are rudimentary, the i3 mk 3 Plus includes a beautiful, professionally printed guide that covers both the pre-assembled version, which we reviewed, and the kit. In our testing, the printer's operation proved smooth, with no misprints, and our test prints were consistently of above-average quality. The i3 mk 3 Plus supports a variety of filament types. A 1 kilo spool is included. The pre-assembled version of the i3 mk 3 Plus is good for anyone from a rank beginner to a 3D printing veteran. It's also a great addition to a classroom or community center. You can save a bit of money by opting for the kit version, which will likely take at least an afternoon to assemble, and may be best left to experienced users and tinkerers. Alright guys, this was our today's video. If you find this video helpful for you, then like the video, and if you come to our channel first time, then hit the subscribe button for our amazing upcoming videos. Be sure to check out the links in the description for the updated price of all products discussed in this video. Hope you have a great day and see you soon in the next video.